President Donald Trump has promised to crack down on activists targeting statues of historical figures across the U.S. On Monday, protesters attempted to bring down a statue outside the White House depicting former President Andrew Jackson. The anti-racism movement targeted Jackson for his ruthless policies against Native Americans. Well, Trump has opposed the removal of all historical figures, including those commemorating Confederate leaders who supported slavery. Well, Andrew Jackson is one of Trump's favorite presidents, and he promised jail time for those who tried to topple the statue. We are looking at long-term jail sentences for these vandals and these hoodlums and these anarchists and agitators. And call them whatever you want. Some people don't like that language, but that's what they are. Well, let's head to Washington for more on this. And our reporter, Ray Suarez, is, Suarez is standing by. Uh, Ray, good evening to you there. Um, just tell me, so this executive order has been uh, put into place by President Donald Trump, or is about to be. Uh, how does this differ from laws that are already in place? It is questionable whether it's going to have much impact as he has dictated it. Uh, he's using what's called the Memo uh, Veterans Memorial Preservation Act, which is a law that's on the books, but it only pertains to monuments that are on federal land of past American military personnel that are under the care of the Veterans Administration or some arm of the federal government. A lot of the attacks that have come against symbols of the past have involved um, monuments that are on state-owned land, that are on city-owned land, that are on county-owned land, where the President of the United States has no jurisdiction. But that doesn't stop Donald Trump. He jumps into a family fight over what we remember and how we remember it with both feet, as he did during the 2016 election, and now he's doing today, as people are arguing not only about Confederate soldiers, but about past presidents, as you mentioned, and even about past cultural figures. A statue of Cervantes, the author of Don Quixote, has been pulled down. A statue of St. Judimpero Serra, who founded the California missions on the West Coast that became San Francisco and Los Angeles and San Diego, has been pulled down as well. It's really unclear whether Donald Trump can have any impact on that part of our national family feud. Isabel? Yeah, Ray, well, he's also trying to have an impact on another issue, too, that we all know too well, and that is the border war with Mexico. And he made his statements there when he was heading there. And um, so at the same time, he's also hardening his stance on foreign workers. So, so what plans are afoot in that respect? The president has not been distracted by either the national demonstrations or by the coronavirus pandemic in moving ahead to place his will, put his stamp on American attitudes toward immigration. He has canceled or postponed the issuing of passports, the issuing of visas to foreign workers and foreign scholars. He is limiting the access of the world to the facilities of the United States at least until the end of the year. By then, he may be in his final weeks as president or be in the midst of a transition preparing for another four years in the job. But it has thrown a tizzy into universities, into medical centers, into research programs that have invited and done all the necessary paperwork to have foreign scholars and experts join us here in the United States to do that work. For now, they will not be landing here at any airport. They will not be joining their international colleagues. They will not be heading to work in America's tech sector either. So it is a tremendously influential group of people who Donald Trump has alarmed. We'll see where this story goes. But it's important at a time when he's heading to the border that he wants to insist that he is in control of who comes into this country, who stays, and what the rules are. But interestingly, Arizona is seeing a marked rise in the number of COVID-19 cases. So he's wading into that debate as well, even as he heads to campaign on America's southern border. Okay, well, thanks so much for bringing all those elements together. Ray Soares for us there in Washington.